Molecular mechanics is a set of models which use an empirical, algebraic, atomistic energy function for molecular systems. Molecular mechanics is one of the most commonly used models for simulating the properties of large biomolecular systems, uh, large uh, materials, lattices, crystal lattices, those sorts of things. So molecular mechanics is one of the most popular methods used in molecular modeling. So let's define what the energy function is that's typically used for molecular mechanics. So starting off, our total energy is going to be a sum of two contributions, the bonded energy and the non-bonded energy. So non -bond <clears throat> the bonded energy comes from structural elements of things which are covalently bonded to each other or bonded to their neighbors. And the non-bonded energy coming from things like charge-charge interactions, London dispersion forces, uh, anything that doesn't come from direct covalent interaction. So the bonded energy can be further broken down into various terms. We have the energy from bonds, just two adjacent atoms which are chemically bonded to one another covalently. We have the energy from bond angles, things like in water, the HOH bonding angle in water. And you have energy from torsions. As we discussed in the previous chapter, things like <clears throat> torsion angle in hydrogen peroxide, HOOH, torsion angles between HCCH and ethane, those sorts of torsion angles. And all of these elements are things that have to be specified in the state of the system. So you have to specify what your bonds, angles, and torsions are in your uh, molecular state. And you have the non-bonded contribution, which as I mentioned typically includes things like the electrostatic energy, where molecule individual atoms are typically represented as point charges with partial charges of an electron. And then you have the van der Waals interaction. Van der Waals sometimes using what's called a Leonard-Jones potential, which we'll describe uh, in detail later in some later videos. Okay, so this is kind of the general uh, type of form. Some, some molecular mechanics models include additional terms. Some include more advanced terms. But these are, the, these are the staple elements that you'll find in pretty much every force field model that's out there. So let's go ahead and define what a force field is. So we have... Ooh, not force feed, force field. So force field models typically include things like this. Your atoms <coughs> are represented as 3D point particles. Much as they would be in some type of XYZ file, as we've discussed before. Um, I said that this function is generally atomistic. There are some molecular mechanics models where you have a little bit of coarse graining, like you might have a CH3 or a CH2 represented as a single particle. But for the most part, it's, it's atomistic, even though there might be a little bit of uh, what's called united atom models, where you have your hydrogens included in the nearest heavy atom. And then for your structure, As I said, in specifying the state of a system, the structure you might need to include are specifying what your bonds, what your bond angles, and what your torsions are in your system. So in order to calculate the energy of things, I have to specify which specific sets of atoms constitute my torsions, angles, and bonds. Whereas for the non-bonded part, just all atoms will interact with one another as long as they are not uh, participating in some covalent relationship. Okay, so what are some commonly used molecular mechanics models? What are some common force fields that are used in simulations? So these <clears throat> examples include things like AMBER. Most of these are acronyms. So the AMBER is Assisted Model Building with Energy Refinement. And that's the model that I'm going to discuss in 
spelling out the functional form of all these terms in the next five or so videos. We have charm, C-H-A-R-M-M, -M, developed at Harvard, so that's chemistry at Harvard Molecular Mechanics, model developed at Harvard. And then we have OPLS, Optimized Potential for Liquid Simulations, often used for other types of simulations that aren't necessarily liquids as well. Gromos, which is involved in the package Gromax, is a molecular uh, dynamics package. It's one of the force fields you can use for that and other packages. And MMFF, the Merck Molecular Force Field. <clears throat> Merck as in the pharmaceutical company Merck, because pharmaceutical companies and the researchers that they hire and contract out to use a lot of these simulations in a lot of their experiments, which are used uh, for research in the pharmaceutical industry and other industries as well. Okay, so how do these models differ? What's going to be different about them? So they're going to vary in their exact functional form of what their energy function is. So that's why for now I'm leaving these as sort of unspecified values because they're slightly different between each of these models here. I'm going to spell out what exactly it is for amber and there's minor di there's minor differences between other uh, force fields here but that this is kind of the overall theme and uh, what's what it is kind of on average. They differ in what the empirical parameters they use are. So as I said, you have to specify things like equilibrium bond distance, stiffness of the bond potential, same thing for angles, same thing for torsions, uh, what the partial charges of your atoms are, uh, how strongly they interact with van der Waals. Those are all specified using the functional form in addition to the empirical parameters you set for the various atoms in your system. And they're also different because they have different types of simulation targets or different types of uh, target molecules that they prefer to simulate for. So amber is very commonly used for DNA simulations, for protein simulations, charm, often for RNA, lots of other things as well, sometimes interchangeably between these two. Uh, OPLS, as the name suggests, for liquid simulations of perhaps small organic molecules, lots of other things as well. And MMFF, since it was developed by Merck, as you can imagine, probably optimized for a lot of uh, uh, drug protein uh, or drug target interaction types of simulations. So as I mentioned, uh, these are typically the types of models that you use for very large macromolecules, things like biopolymers, things like material lattices, and you can have up to, you know, millions of atoms because these models are typically so so small and quick compared to what we're going to have to do when we get into quantum mechanics. So if you have a sufficiently powerful computer, and the best computers these days are capable of solving these models for millions of atoms, and then for actual simulations of these when we discuss molecular dynamics, doing these over time, they do these for you know up to uh, you know billions, trillions of time steps, so up to 10 to the 15 configurations. So the world record setting simulations up of these are doing, you know, 10 to the 15th, 10 to the 16th, 10 to the 17th simulations on tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of atoms.